Welcome to the Lady Gang. You're about to listen to our podcast, but there is so much more our community has to offer. Follow us at the Lady Gang, join our secret Facebook group, shop our clothing line, books, and find out when we're going to be in your city at theladygang.com. We're so excited you're here. Enjoy the show. This episode of Lady Gang is brought to you by the all-new Hyundai Tucson, the SUV reimagined from the inside out. Learn more at Hyundai.com. It's time for a quickie. Podcast One presents The Lady Gang, the Hollywood girl posse. With Lady Gang Quickie, here's Kelty Knight, Becca Tobin, and Jack Vanek. Let's make this quick. Our guest today is a business coach, mama, wifey, lawyer, and CEO of Hello7, a company and podcast. Yay! She found it to help women hit seven figures without sacrificing their families or sanity. Yay. She's been featured in Forbes, Women's Health, The Washington Post, much more, and The Drew Barrymore Show, which is we need to talk about because that's my dream. Um, she also has a brand new book called We Should All Be Millionaires, A Woman's Guide to Earning More, Building Wealth, and Gaining Economic Power. We can't wait to talk about our dollars. Please yes. welcome to the Lady Gang, <laughs> Rachel Rogers. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Can you intro me everywhere I go? <laughs> yes. Be I'm available. You ask it's, for. <laughs> but I, now that I've read the book, I'm probably going to negotiate a pretty high rate. I'm just saying. Yes, exactly. You're going to double your prices, right? <laughs> so here on Lady Gang over the past five years, we have talked about everything with no topic is off limits it's vaginas and sex and bodily functions and disappointment and grief and happiness and hairs and all the things we and we've had a wealth of guests and there's one so people are always like is there anything you won't talk about and this isn't on purpose but i think the topic that we talk about the least is money yeah because that's true there's something in us as women i don't want to be too like overarching but I don't understand it, but we don't talk about it. It's still shameful, weird, this like hidden room backdoor thing and women feel guilty or what is going on? Yes. We have so much shame about money. We have shame if we don't have enough of it. And then we have Mm -hmm. shame if we have too much, which I'm like, I've never heard of too much. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm black. I'm going to make as much money as possible for myself and then my community. You know what I mean? So like there is no too much in my opinion, but I do. And I think that's on society, right? Like we are sent these messages that we're not good with money. We need to cut the lattes. I never met a millionaire that became a millionaire because they cut lattes, you know? Um, yes. I mean, can that we is not? the dumbest advice. I don't it understand makes me want it. To throw things. I cannot like, just stop it right now. <laughs> cut coupons, stop being a shopaholic, you know, all of that nonsense that they send. These are the media messages that we get as women. And for men, it's like, you know, invest, become powerful. There's images of lions and all kinds of crap, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's what men are taught. Buy the power suit, invest in yourself or whatever. And women are like, well, just shrink, shrink, shrink as much as possible. Spend nothing, but make sure you look beautiful. Don't buy frivolous lipstick, but you better look stunning, you know, at the (sighs) same time. It's just, it's, it's nuts. So I think we almost avoid it as a topic. I mean, I talk about it a lot and I'm trying to normalize it. Um, I actually wear a necklace every day. I don't have it on today, but it it says rich bitch. I had it made for me because someone called me a rich bitch. And I was like, I'm going to own that and turn that into jewelry. (laughs) That's actually like the biggest compliment ever. I think think so too. Exactly. Especially for someone like me who grew up low income. You know what I mean? Like my family struggled. We were on food stamps. Our lights got turned off and being able to turn nothing into something i think is exceptional and i want to teach other people how to do it as well and i think it is so within reach for us as women to become millionaires we just think it's far away or it's not doable and it totally is i don't know about people listening but you explaining that i am filled with rage because you're so right yes don't do the yeah. frivolous spending don't do this don't do that and then the men it's like invest your money and you're, mm-hmm. you just nailed something that has been so hard to verbalize as a woman who makes money and a woman who's trying to get other women to make money. Like, no wonder we're yes. all so f-ed up around money. We've never actually heard somebody say that before, like actually lay it out and say it. It's just been kind of subconsciously like pounded down our throats our entire lives. So that is so interesting. And it's so simple the yeah. way that we're being like women are kind of being controlled like that. Honestly, 
crashed. Yeah. And there's history here too, right? Because we couldn't, as women, have credit cards until the 70s. We couldn't have bank accounts without a male cosigner. That's like our mothers and grandmothers. You know what I mean? So right. like, that's not so far away. So women having money is relatively new. Um, you know, so I feel like we've done a lot and we've made a lot of progress and there's so much more we could do. And I think if we share it, especially as women who are making money, share how they're making money. Here's what I got paid, right? Like you should negotiate. I tell everybody what I got for my publishing deal. Great. <laughs> I tell all my business That's because amazing. I think it's important, right? We got to share this information so we know and we can negotiate and ask for more. Gosh. All right. I want to take it on that note. I'm go. I'm skipping down my list because what you're saying is so important. And there's, I'm take, I'm going to page 128 of we should all be millionaires. And, um, you know, Rachel saying lack of confidence is costing you millions. And there's this part on one page 128 where she talks about this study that shows that women consistently underestimate their performance on tests. She says, you take an exam and you walk out of the exam and the people are like, how did you do? And the study goes, you know, well, the woman will say, I got 60% of the answers correct. But in actuality, the woman would have gotten 80% of uh, the questions correct. And there's this knee-jerk reaction to assume that you do poorly. And men in this study tended to do the opposite, where they would mm -hmm. probably get an, a 60%, but they'd be like, I aced it. I'm the freaking right. bomb. <laughs> Well, isn't this, this is like that meme where it's like, carry yourself with the confidence no of a mediocre there. white male. Yes. Like men just by, just by default, think that they're so much like hotter and smarter and more powerful than they are. And women by default, we're always questioning our self-worth in like whatever way that is. So that's, oh. that's not surprising. Yeah. Well, that, and that's by design, right? We yeah. live in a patriarchal society that would literally was designed for white men to win at straight white men, straight white men to be very specific. Right. And for like everybody else to be basically serving them, you know, yeah. and now yeah. we're in this process of like reorganizing our society and it is slow and it's annoying, you know, but yeah. that, but that is why. And there's, there's another uh, study that is similar to that, which is that women won't apply for a job where they don't have every single criteria asked for mm. on the job. Whereas men, if they have even 50% of the criteria, they'll apply and be like, job, please. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so we think we can't do it. Right. And we underestimate our value. And, yeah. you know, in that chapter, I talk it's about so a lot about imposter syndrome and Maya Angelou and Michelle Obama and all of these incredible women that we adore as a society have had imposter syndrome as well and have uh, talked about it, even as much success as they have. So I think it's just something that we are living with and are always going to live with. And we almost have to counteract that. And honestly, I think the best way to do it is by having a lady gang, right? Like having your squad to reflect back to you, like you ain't doing that for that amount of money. Hell no. Right. Like to reflect back to you, you're too badass for that. Yeah. Or to, you know, say your names in rooms full of opportunity. You know, that's what we need. I think when we as women, and there are studies in the book that talk about that too. Like when we band together as women and support one another, uh, that's the network we need. And we have much more success with doing that than thinking that we need like a white male ally to advocate for us. Because usually they don't. They open doors for other white men that are similar to them. They do not open doors for women. They certainly aren't opening doors for women of color, you know? And so we got to rely on each other. And this is so interesting, especially in, in our world, in the podcast game, we've been so lucky because we started so early that we, we came up with these group of women and a couple of these female podcasters that are sort of in our little tribe. And it's been really beneficial. I would say one of the most beneficial things is because we'll be like, Hey, we're doing this deal. Like, what do you think? Like, what are you guys charging? Like, what are you asking if someone asks you to do this? Like, and we can set across, like, we're basically setting a new normal across the entire genre yes, of like, I love what, it. Take you know, over. <laughs> and I think we would lowball ourselves if I hadn't been able to call so and so and say, "Hey, wh like, what are your downloads? What are you charging for an ad? Like, blah blah blah." So I, I think this is really interesting, and I hope that you inspire so many millions (pun intended) of women to like start <laughs> talking about this stuff and their salaries and what their deals are. I think the thing that I see the most, and how you know, maybe maybe your advice on how we can get over this, we see it a lot in our Facebook group, and I see it with my own friends, is. There's this thing that women do where we feel so lucky to get picked. 
you know, yes. like, oh my God, they picked me that then they don't ask for a livable wage. Uh, the promotion, the title change, the hours off, like the thing that you need, right? Like everyone knows what that, and I'm not talking ridiculous demands. I'm just talking about like a girl I know that's been at the same job for three years and she's crushing it and she's still at her starter salary. Like Mm -hmm. there's money there and she's not asking for it because she feels like she got lucky or, oh my God, I'm so lucky I got chosen. How do we get over that? Oh, just spend five minutes with me. <laughs> I, I hate that whole idea that I'm lucky. No, no, no. You need me. You know, even like my amazing publisher who is amazing. They needed me, frankly, because to be honest, who else is, first of all, black and writing about money, right? Because they're not giving us publishing deals. They, they give publishing deals to black people talking about race and like as if we don't have advice on everything else, you know? Uh-huh. So it's like recognizing what you are bringing to the marketplace, whether it's comedy or, or, you know, your lived experience or your particular type of expertise, you got to know your value. There's a whole chapter in here called million dollar value. And that's what it's about really honing in on what are your natural skill sets that you've always had as a kid, right. That you still use now and can use now in your career to advance yourself and taking stock of your professional skill set and really understanding how do I add value in the world? How do I add value for consumers or for companies who want to do brand? deals with me or whatever. And understanding that really getting clear on that, that is what starts to help you to build confidence and realize like, oh, I need to be negotiating and there's money being left on the table, you know? So I think really understanding your value and spending time, even writing it down, getting real clear on like, how do I actually add value in the world and learning how to sell yourself, right? We all have to be saleswomen. And um, I think that is a crucial key. And that's the real job security. When you understand what your value is and you can pitch yourself confidently, that is in, that's, that's worth billions, right? Wow. Well, and this is an amazing story. Alex, who's here and she's producing us today. The way I met her is that she, I wasn't looking to, hi- we weren't looking to hire anyone. Um, and a friend of a friend knew, and she was like, we just take 10 minutes with this girl. She's really interested in what you're doing. She took the meeting and on the way out the door, she looks at me and she goes, you really need me. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> and you know what? True words have never been spoken. Never. I love we it. didn't even realize how much we needed her. Yes, but it was that confidence that I was like, okay, girl, like if you really feel like you can see a clear vision of how your set skill set can help me in what I'm doing, I'm going to give you a shot and it, you know, and prove me right in every way. Um, And, and that kind of attitude, like also like gutsy, you know, but but I love that. Right. I think it's, I think it's necessary. And I tell a story in the book about raising my prices because another woman tapped me on the shoulder and was like, um, you should be charging a lot more than that because she saw my published prices on my website. This is when I had a law firm. And I was like, you don't know what you're talking about. And was like immediately offended, right? And didn't want to deal with it or whatever. And then I started thinking about it and I was like, you know what? Let me just give it a shot. And so I was not, I didn't have the confidence to charge these prices, but I just got on the phone. I was like the next person that calls, the next potential client, I'm just going to throw out double the number and just see what their response is. And so- I get, I, of course, the next person comes along immediately, right? Because I'm like, oh, I don't feel confident enough. But like, <laughs> now it's there. So I'm like, okay, let me do it. So I, I'm on the phone with this guy. And he telling him all my, my whole spiel or whatever. Then he asks, how much does it cost? And I'm like, it's whatever, $1,500. And I'm, I do this. <laughs> Oh you know, God. and y'all can't see me, but I'm like scrunching like up together, closing yes. my eyes. Like, don't say anything. Say the price and shut up because yeah. that's what we do too. Then we start justifying but the price, if I yeah. adding yeah. a discount. Just <laughs> shut up. Say the price and shut up. Okay. I'll give you four <laughs> times the amount of value. Exactly. Exactly. And so I said the price and the guy goes, I'll take two. And I was like, seriously? <sighs> And I'm like running around my apartment afterwards because I had like never made $3,000 at one time. This was really early in my career. But yeah, I think even if you don't have the confidence, you know, like to say you need me, right? Fake it, right? Like just put it out there and try it. You don't have to try it. You don't have to publish it with everybody, but you could just try it with one person and see what happens, see how they react. Um, I think that kind of thing helps to build that confidence. That guy saying, yes, I was like, oh, hell yes. This is the price now. Now, now I'm going to be like, obviously this is the price. And if you don't like it, get off my phone, you know? Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, it is amazing. And I, I, I like what you said there about like the imposter syndrome and then just kind of like faking it because I do want us to point out that I don't think it matters. Like, I mean, Becca, you've done some big TV deals before and Jack, you've done deals with your clothing line and, and Rachel, obviously you've done these big deals. I don't think it matters if you're, you're very confident about your skills or it's a big money thing or a small money thing. I don't think anyone actually feels comfortable asking for that raise. Like, I don't think mm-hmm. there's anyone on this planet that's like, you know what I love doing? <laughs> Just like asking for double my price. It feels so good inside. Like everyone's unsure <laughs> of it. Everyone feels like they don't deserve it. So like, you're not alone in that. It's just about kind of getting over that. Right. That's what you talk a lot about in the book. Exactly. And realizing like, listen, leaving money on the table is just not acceptable, especially if we want to make strides for women politically, societally, for the, the marginalized members of our community, it's up to us. Like, the government will, you know, maybe in a hundred years, they'll get around to it, but I'm impatient. So I want results now. And so if we are leaving money on the table, that's money that we could have donated to charity. That's money that we could have backed a political candidate that we feel passionate about. Right. That's money that could be solving world problems. And that is what studies show that women do when they make money, they invest it in the world. Like they take care of themselves. And then that overflow yep. serves the greater community. This is actually how they rebuild war-torn countries, right? They invest in the women in those countries because they know the women are going to take care of themselves, their families, their kids, and then the community. So we have to stop leaving money on the table because it costs all of us when we leave money on the table. So I feel like that can be your motivation. If you're not doing it for yourself, do it for all of us, do it for the next woman who's going to come behind you. That's why I negotiated the hell out of my book deal. Cause I'm like the next black woman that walks through this door, I want you to pay her this as a, at a minimum, you should be offering her this, you know, and I want you to get accustomed to betting on women, betting on black women, you know, um, so we, we need to see these opportunities as I'm opening doors for other women when I demand what I'm worth. Wow. That's a really good point. I've heard that stat about women and how they invest their money versus like men who run to the Cayman Islands and hide all theirs. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I have a question a for you. Different. Do you have advice? <laughs> Cause I'm sitting here and I'm feeling so inspired and like, you know, I'm an actress and there's a lot of negotiating and there's a lot of self-doubt and there's a lot of self, basically self-loathing. Um, but how do you tell women like how they determine like what their worth is so that yes. you don't go in guns blazing and I ask for Julia Roberts salary and clearly that's not what I deserve. So do you have advice for women on how to determine their value? Yeah. Well, honestly, I, I feel like I, like the lawyer in me wants to immediately argue with you that you're not worth what Julia Roberts gets, right? <laughs> like, even if you don't you're have hired. her track record or whatever, right? <laughs> I'll take two. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm your new manager. Just Thank let you. me, let me handle this. Um, <laughs> I've lost my train of thought now. Because- so you're saying that I should get Julia Roberts' salary. <laughs> you're saying that she is Julia $20 Roberts. $20 million. <laughs> we cannot I afford her you, here Rachel. at Lady A. But I, I do actually- think that's interesting. Okay. Like the tips on how to go around and find out like, all right, I'm going to ask for more, but I don't want to highball it too much and like get out of the conversation. So like- Like a realistic on- self You go to your friends. Do you go to other people? <laughs> like- yeah. Realistic self-worth. <laughs> I here's my thing. Stop being realistic. Demand what you want. You know, I think that's what we worry about. We're like, well, I'm gone too far. No, typically we're not going far enough. Stats show we don't go far enough. So I I encourage you to like you know, whatever that ballpark metaphor is swing for the fences. I think it is. I don't watch sports. (laughs) Neither do we, (laughs) but literally like go as far as you can and see, like, here's the thing. There's actually a study that I, I researched for the book that talked about how, when we set mediocre goals, they're boring. They're a snooze fest. So they don't motivate us to take any kind of action. But when we set a goal that seems outrageous, and then we're like, but what if I could do it though? Like, Mm -hmm. it's kind of fun to even just try and see what happens. It feels exciting. It gets our juices flowing. Right. And then we're like willing to try more things and put ourselves out there just to be like, well, let's see, wouldn't it be crazy if, right. Let me try this impossible thing. So I actually think we need to go further with our goals. And I think we're more likely to reach them. You know, like when I started out as a business owner, I just wanted to replace my $40,000 a year salary and get some decent health insurance. (laughs) Like Mm -hmm. that was my goal. And if I could work from home, make 40 K, you know, and have health insurance, that would be the dream. And Mm -hmm. then 
that dream got bigger and bigger. And then I got to a place where I was like, I want seven figures. I'm making six figures. And you know what? It ain't enough. I want a bigger house. I want to send my kids to private school. I want a nicer life. And so I'm going to see if I can make a million. Then I made a million. Then I was like, well, let me see if I can make 2 million. Then I made that. Then it was like, well, let me see if I can make 5 million. And then I'm like, oh, I'm just going to keep doing impossible shit because apparently impossible is very possible, you know? Yeah. So I think, I think shoot for, for more and really be ambitious. And one of the other things I recommend that women do is like literally actually do the vision, right? There's a chapter called million dollar vision. And let's, let's actually run the numbers. What do you actually want? Do you want to create a foundation? Do you want to take care of your parents? Do you want to build a school? Do you want to buy lots of Chanel bags? Do you want a private jet? I mean, I don't care what it is, right? Because mm-hmm. I think as women, if we are visibly making money, it is revolutionary, period. You are inspiring somebody somewhere by being a woman who's visibly making money on her own, right? Mm-hmm. And so I, I think no matter what you want to do with it, but putting some numbers around it and saying like, how much does that dream house cost on a monthly basis? Mm-hmm. How much does this private school cost? How much does it cost to like, whatever, serve this charitable cause? Run the numbers on that, figure out what that is, and then back your way into it and start brainstorming, okay, how am I going to make that additional money? Like you, if you don't know what that gap is, right, it seems so impossible and far off. But if you actually look at it, you're like, okay, I need to make another $20,000 a month. Let me think about some ideas about how I could do that. I love that. When we come back, we're going to talk about my favorite part of the book. We should all be millionaires, which is broke ass decisions versus million dollar decisions. Yes. <laughs> we're still unsure of which we're, we're making. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm sure you know that we recently had our Lady Gang merch drop of some really cute sweatshirts that I designed myself. And if you bought one of our Lady Gang new merch items, guess what? We sent them out with Stamps.com, which we love. So Stamps.com brings the services of the U.S. Postal Service and UPS right to your computer. It's a must-have for any business. So whether you're a small office that's sending out a few invoices, a side hustle Etsy shop shipping out orders, or just navigating this hybrid work life, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. No wonder over 1 million businesses choose stamps.com for their mailing and shipping. You simply use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, and any class of mail anywhere you want to send. And once your mail is ready, just schedule a pickup or drop off. It's that simple. So stop wasting time going to the post office and go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with our promo code Lady Gang, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital skill. No long-term commitments or contracts. So just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in code Lady Gang. That's stamps.com, promo code Lady Gang. Stamps.com, never go to the post office again. All right, let's talk about vehicles. Let's talk about sexy vehicles, sexy, smart vehicles. That's how we feel about the new Tucson. So every inch of the all new Hyundai Tucson has been completely reimagined, resulting in an SUV loaded with available innovations, both inside and out. So from design to technology to safety, every aspect of the new Tucson has been improved upon. The SUV has been completely redesigned inside and out to create the best Tucson ever. So they have a digital key that allows you to use your phone as a spare key uh, game changer. They have an LED daytime running lights that are stylishly hidden within the front grill, making them invisible when they are not in use and it is a super chic look. They have this 10.25 inch full touch infotainment screen with user profiles. It is like being in a spaceship. We loved the Tucson. The Lady Gang got to ride around in style in it a couple weeks ago. We love Hyundai. We love the new Tucson. So if you want to go figure out a little bit more, figure out if this is the car for you, a sexy SUV, who doesn't want that? Learn more at Hyundai.com. You know the feeling of having a super stressful day. Maybe you had a bad day at work. Maybe you're just exhausted from taking care of your kids. There's a million different reasons that would stress us out. And sometimes you just want to take a moment to yourself and chill. And that's when you reach for a Coors Light. It is made to chill. The mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. That way you know when it is time to chill. It's my favorite thing about Coors Light because there's nothing worse than drinking a warm beer. So when you need to hit reset, just open a Coors Light. Light, it's mountain cold refreshment made to chill. Coors Light is cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged, which means it's literally made to chill. It's as crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies, perfect for a moment to unwind. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Coors Light is the one that I choose when I need to unwind, so when you need to hit reset, reach for the beer that is made to chill. Get Coors Light and the new look delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart. Celebrate responsibly. The Lady Gang. 
All right. So kind of at the start of the book, um, Rachel has this amazing like four page grid and she talks about like million dollar decisions, MDDs, we call them and broke ass decisions, broke ass decisions, bad broke Mm. ass decisions. Mm. Mm. (laughs) Okay. So can you um, discuss with us the difference between like what some of the broke ass decisions we've been making and then what are some of the million dollar decisions? Yes. Okay. So here's the thing, right? All the personal finance gurus out there that give us money advice, tell us to budget and tighten up and everything should be smaller and be and inconvenience ourselves endlessly to save money. And I actually think that most of that is typically a broke ass decision, you know, Mm. and what we should be doing is making million dollar decisions, which means like, how can we expand? How can we have more of what we want? How can we create more time? right? Like how can we have more joy? Because when we feel like a million dollars, we're more likely to make it. That is the reality, right? We're not going to make millions by tightening up and like cutting out the latte. So, so, you know, how can we start making more expansive decisions, investing in ourselves, investing in the opportunities in front of us, instead of making those decisions where it's like, everything is tight, we feel broke. We feel, you know, um, like we don't have enough time. We don't have enough anything. Uh, that's not where, uh, what I've seen with my clients, and I've worked with thousands of women building wealth. That is not what causes us and motivates us and actually gets us to make money. So start making million dollar decisions. The one, the example I love to give is I've had this argument with so many of my clients. It's insane. <laughs> the, here's the gateway drug, right? The gateway drug is outsource laundry, right? Like stop doing your laundry, use a drop-off service, whatever mm-hmm. you got to do, just get it so that you don't have to do it. And drop-off service is like, what is that? 50 bucks a week, right? Maybe less, especially if you don't have kids with all their mm-hmm. laundry, right? So like mm-hmm. 50 bucks a week. And, you know, women come to me and they say, well, I can't imagine someone handling my underwear. And I'm like, okay, that's a broke ass decision. Like can't imagine yourself spending eight hours doing laundry on the weekends when you've just worked all week, right? And you need to rest and recover so you can come back on Monday and slay, right? Like be more disturbed by that than somebody (laughs) handling your underwear, you know? And like, just outsource it. Tell them exactly what kind of crazy organic laundry detergent you want them to use. Give them the instructions that you need to pay them well to do it. And then get it done so that you can focus on creating more earning potential because that's what happens. When we buy back our time, we just find more ways to make money. We rest and recover. We can be more creative, right? Uh And we, you know, we'll create more wealth. This is my favorite one. I'm going to give the example. So in the book, the broke ass decision is your boss compliments you and says you did excellent work. You reply that it was really a team effort, even though it totally wasn't. And you downplay your hard work. <laughs> yeah. And then she goes, okay, so we've all been that person. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The whole cast was great. The whole team, everyone worked so hard. You're like, I did it all myself at four in the morning. Um, <laughs> the million dollar <laughs> decision, your boss compliments you compliments you and says you did excellent work. You say thank you and place a diamond tiara on your head like the goddamn (laughs) queen you are. And then you add this to the list of receipts you have for your upcoming salary negotiation. Oh, yes. yes. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. (laughs) Boom, 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 boom. boom. It's incredible. (laughs) That is amazing. And and there's another part that you talk about uh, and you kind of hit on it already. You know, this broke ass decision of like, you want to make more money. Everyone wants to make more money, but you're like, oh, I am so bogged down with the laundries and the dinners and the kids and the life. And like, it just doesn't feel possible. I have another second in the day to even do anything. And you, you mentioned like, you know, you have to just sit down, do some research and then make a clear decision, which goes along with my line of manifesting everything. So like, you know, you have to make this decision of like, okay, you know what I, I, you have to start somewhere. So today's the day you're listening to lady gang podcast. Today's the day where you never accept doing shit for free ever again. Mm -hmm. And you start your iPhone chart of making your list of all the things for your salary negotiation. And you ask for more than you even think you can possibly get. Exactly. And here's the other piece of that. It's million dollar boundaries. That Mm. is such a key piece, especially for women. We, even as breadwinners, we could be working just as much as our spouses. And yet we wind up doing all of the domestic labor still to this day, stat after stat. I mean, we could be the breadwinning woman and we're still doing the vast majority of the domestic labor. And I'm just like boundaries, ladies. No, 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 no. We're not doing it. I'm making dinner twice a week and 
on the other nights, y'all can all kiss my ass, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not doing it. So eat cereal or whatever, but like, I'm not doing it every day. I'm not doing all of the labor. Let's have a discussion, right? Like we will avoid these hard conversations with our partners, with the people in our life who take advantage of us instead of like, and then give away our time, give away so much energy because these, you know, people who they have an agenda for what they want you to do with your time. And that doesn't include what your priorities are, right? So we have to prioritize our own needs and communicate them. And I think, I think we can be good at like coming up with a boundary that we want to set, but then we don't communicate it. We don't enforce it when it happens. Um, and that then we get dumped all over, right? And get taken advantage of. I, there was a time in my life where I'm like, and my husband is amazing. He's been a stay-at-home dad. He does so much. I haven't touched laundry in, I don't know, a decade, literally. Literally, oh. he won't let me. Um, he's like, you don't know what you're doing, so get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a time in my life where I felt like I feel like a really empowered woman in every area of my life, except at home, because I let my family just dictate all of my time, my children. Here's what you're doing right now. You're, I'm waking you up too early. I won't go to bed at night. I'm demanding 100% of your attention. Guess what, child? I love you and you don't deserve 100% of my attention, right? Like, I don't owe you that. And I don't want my sons growing up thinking that any woman owes them all of their time. You know what I mean? Including their spouses. Same thing for my daughter. I don't want her to grow up thinking that, you know, her desires are last on the list. So I think we have to prioritize ourselves. We have to communicate our boundaries. We need to stand up to our partners and be like, yeah, that was cute what happened for the last couple of years, but that shit's <laughs> over. Just so you know, I'm not making dinner anymore. Figure it out. Hire somebody, do it yourself. I don't care. It's not going to be me. <laughs> so, wow. And then we have more time Then we can take care of ourselves Right. right. We can spend quality time with the people that we love and we can increase our earning potential. Right. Because you spend so much time, like think of our everyday work day, right? Like for the majority of people, you know, you're on Monday morning, you're just like praying for the weekend. You're like, let me do the mm -hmm. bare minimum at work because I have no energy. I'm on my, my ninth coffee. And when they're like, come up with new ideas or like fight harder or like, you know, it's like, you're not crushing it because you're so exhausted. And yes. it's, there is this thing about space in your life. You need that. You said, have said it multiple times during this interview, recovery. You mm -hmm. can't go out and be creative or get more or be boss at your job. If you don't have a second to like, <sighs> You yes. know, yeah. which is so strange because it's like we're not told that we can are allowed that second, you know, exactly thinking time like we should schedule time to think I literally have Fridays blocked. I'm literally in the middle of a book launch and I'm not doing crap tomorrow, <laughs> you yeah. know, and I'm like, I want this book to be as successful as possible. But I know there's only so much I could do without and show up and be great. Right. Mm -hmm. After a while, I need a break. I need to think I need to rest. And then I'll come back stronger and get better results. Right. Than if I just go, go, go all the time and kill myself. I right. love that again. So I'm much. filled with rage because I'm thinking of <laughs> how men are going and playing 18 fucking holes of golf mm, yeah, and they're resetting for the week and the women, a lot of them, not to generalize, but I'm just looking at all the women in my life who are crushing it in their careers. They're still at home taking care of everyone else's bullshit on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Cause the man yes. has to call. Cause he's got it. And, and let's, and let's take our, some of our cues from them, right? Yeah. Like my husband takes a nap every day and I used to be so enraged. I would like walk in from like hustling from one thing to another. And then I'd like <laughs> walk in the room to change my outfit for the next thing or whatever. And he's knocked out and I'd just be so pissed. Like, how dare you nap? Ask me for the help I need, you know, <sighs> and wanted to throw things. And then I realized, you know what? I need to get on your level. That's what mm -hmm. I'm gonna start doing. And I'm mm -hmm. not a napper, but I'm like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to build in breaks to my day that are just a non-negotiable, like unscheduled time. And I'm going to take care of myself and I'm going to go see my friends and I'm going to, you know, like, ha like enjoy my life. You know, it, it, I'm seeing him do that. He feels zero guilt. I have mm -hmm. never, not once in 16 years, have I seen him feel guilty about not doing something for the kids or whatever. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to take some cues from you and I'm going I'm to keep that same energy that you got going on here. <laughs> I love I it. It's like, don't be do. resentful. Just copy them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's so true. And I will say that when you adopt these Rachel isms here <laughs> that you've heard today, ladies and some gentlemen, like everyone in the world will treat you differently. Yeah. It, 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 everyone around you will 
respect your time, your energy, your worth yes. more. And because you're respecting your time, your energy, your yes. worth more. Yes. And I think that this, this is game changing advice. Um, you know, we're going to talk about money, money, money. We're going to talk about money, money. We're going to talk about money more here on lady gang, but I think this was a good first step for us. Rachel really broke the bank, if you will, pun intended. Um, you guys please pick up her book. We should all be millionaires by Rachel Rogers. You can follow Rachel at Rachel Rogers. Esquire. Okay. And you can listen to the Hello 7 podcast, which is like Hello 7 figures. You guys get it. Um, anywhere you get your podcast. So we're so happy for you. Congratulations. Let's go make this a bestseller. Please come yeah. back. Yes, please, please come, come back. back. I, I feel inspired. Come back and talk money with you anytime. Great. Yes. <laughs> Congrats on it. the book. Congrats. Thank we you know. know. It's really, really hard. We, we were, were here, here for a long time, time but we were, were here, here for a good time. Rich time. <laughs> Thanks for listening. The Lady Gang is produced by Alex Ingber, Will Sterling, Steve Delameter, and Jared Monaco. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review our podcast. And if you love it, share it with your friends on social media. Like, oh my God, I just listened to Lady Gang. This episode's so great. Swipe up to listen. And if you really want to, which we know you do, please follow us on social at Kelty, at Becca, at Jack Vanek, and at The Lady Gang. Sign up for our newsletter at theladygang.com and join our secret Facebook group. It's super fun. See you next Tuesday. This episode of Lady Gang was brought to you by the all-new Hyundai Tucson. The SUV reimagined from the inside out. Learn more at Hyundai.com.